Yo, what's up, Facebook Live? We just listened to Natani Means. Track called Warrior. Yeah, look it up. It's on YouTube. Natani Means. He's actually, uh, he's, uh, if you ever heard of uh, uh, Russell Means, one of the people who started the AIM movement. Well, his son is actually a rapper. N-A-T-A-A-N-I-I Means. Uh, his track's called Warrior. Uh, this is something that he wrote in 2015. It says, in today's society, we're quick to use the word warrior. But in a lot of indigenous people's language across Turtle Island, that word is translated into many different definitions. In this video, I chose to travel the country to different events and locations to depict our modern day warriors and everything they do because all of us are fighting to survive in one way or another. Which brings it back to why in our languages, the definition isn't limited to one. That's pretty cool. So this video is directed and edited by Natani Means. Uh, you gotta check it out. He's, uh, so he's from Santa Fe. I don't know where he's from actually, but his dad was uh, Russell Means, one of the people who started, started the AIM movement. Sounds like a siren out there. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Tuck Live, JessFM.ca. Tuck Live Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. That was Natani Means where the track called Warrior. Actually, Natani Means, if, uh, if you haven't looked him up, check him out. He's actually, uh, I was just talking to Facebook Live here. He's the son of uh, Russell Means, who is one of the uh, originators of the AIM movement. So, what's in the news lately? I've been uh, kind of taking a look at everything that's in the news, and uh, something that I've been wanting to talk about in the past couple weeks is Wob Canoe. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Wob Canoe. Uh, Wob is actually, when I first heard of Wob Canoe, he was uh, a rapper. He was getting an award out east uh, at the Indigenous, I think it was Indigenous Music Awards or Aboriginal Music Video or something like that. Um, he was receiving a rap award for hip hop, you know, hip hop music. Video. I'm not sure if he won or if he was just nominated. But I remember that year and uh, actually got a chance to um, sit around with him while they're, um, he was sitting there with, uh, what's his name, George Leach. And they're all freestyling and rapping down in the lobby, this big old hotel. Like it was some kind of after party went on all night. It was really cool. And I didn't know who he was at the time until I saw that. So I looked him up and I, I knew him as a rapper. Now, more recently, he's gone into politics. I started seeing him on the CBC as well. And... Uh, He's now, um, well, I'll, I'll just read you his uh, Wikipedia. I looked him up, okay? So it says, well, I think he has a longer name than Wob. I don't want to try that. Wob Canoe, MLA, born December 31st, 1981. Better known as Wob Canoe, is a leader of the Manitoba New Democrat Party and leader of the opposition in the Legislative Assembly of Manitoba. Before entering politics, he was a musician, broadcaster, and university administrator best known as host of programming on CBC Radio and CBC Television. So that's kind of where he's been known, right? Doing it, doing it strong for the, for the indigenous people. Um, here's, here's what he got an award, that's right, in 2009 for Live by the Drum as an album. He got an Aboriginal People's Choice Music Award that year. I remember that time. Yeah. That's what I remember him from. So, it says here he's considered running for the leadership of the Assembly of First Nations in its 2014 leadership election, but decided not to mount a campaign as he was newly married in August and felt it was not the right time to be away from home for an extended period. This is, this is um, Wikipedia who writes this stuff. Um, in 2016, he was announced as a Manitoba New Democrat Party candidate for Fort Rouge in the 2016 provincial election. Uh, during the final days of the election, misogynistic and anti-gay tweets and other social media comments were discovered by media on Canoe's Twitter feed. This created a scandal which calls for the new Democrat Party to drop Canoe from the ballots. Canoe apologized for his past comments. Um, then on April 19, 2016, Canoe defeated Manitoba Liberal leader Rana Bokari in the riding of Fort Rouge. He was subsequently named the NDP spokesperson for reconciliation 
and critic for education, advanced learning and training, as well as housing and community development. Kani ran for leadership of the Manitoba NDP in 2017 and was elect elected leader at the convention of September 16th, defeating the only other candidate, former cabinet minister Steve Ashton, by a margin of three to one. Now, this is Wikipedia, remember that, right? So um, Wikipedia is sometimes wrong. Remember kids, never start your research with Wikipedia, just talk live, that's what we do though. <laughs> Apparently we believe fake news. I thought the end of the world was last week. But, so, why are we talking about it, right? Uh, he's been in the news a lot lately. Uh, so, what's happening is, right here, this is from the star.com. Says Manitoba NDP leader Wab Kanu says questions about assault accusations continue. Um, someone sent some, an anonymous email to the media, and this anonymous email was his um, criminal record, his past criminal record, and, uh, his court records, and stuff like that. And there was assault charges on there against his uh, girlfriend at that time, and that's been the big news about him, right? So basically. Well, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's an attack, basically, on his character, right? And Canoe's uh, stance is that, well, he was a young man, and he's changed since then. So, here's what it says here. Um, Star.com says, one of the leading contenders in a federal NDP race um, is standing by the new leader of the Manitoba wing of his party. As Rob Canoe acknowledges, he will continue to face questions about 14-year-old domestic violence charges. So this happened 14 years ago. Uh, Jagmeet Singh, who has been endorsed by the newly minted Manitoba NDP leader, said Tuesday he believes survivors, but added, Canoe now speaks out on violence against women. Believes survivors. But the person I know now, the Bob I know now, is someone that's been very clear on his position around making sure that we uh, have a strong approach towards tackling violence against women, he said in an interview. This is Singh, he's saying this. Uh, he's made it very clear he is a strong supporter of women's rights, of gender justice. So the person I know now is someone that has been very clear on these issues, so I can leave it at that. Canoe's personal life has recently become a high-profile political issue after domestic violence charges came to light via anonymous emails sent to Winnipeg media outlets last month. The indigenous activist, author and rookie MLA, was charged with two counts of assaulting his former partner, Tara Hart, in 2003. The charges were stayed in 2004, and court transcripts made available to date do not outline reasons for the decision. Canoe, 35, has repeatedly denied the accusations and has pointed out that the case was dropped in the end. Okay. So, that's happening, right? One of our lead indigenous politicians, right, is uh, out there in the news. He's out there. He's running for, um, is he running for leadership? Here, this is actually wabcanoe.ca. So, you check out his site right here. He has his own site. It looks like he's talking to children there. Uh, he is a passionate advocate for social justice. He brings new energy and new ideas to the fight for long dad, long-standing NDP values. Um... Health care is an act of love. Uh, why Wab Canoe? I chose to stand for leader of the Manitoba NDP because I'm motivated by the core values we share as new Democrats. Values like love, equality, and social justice. Those values are realized when we have an economy that works for everyone with more and better jobs. When you know the public services your family counts on will be there when you need them. When hardworking families can afford a good quality of life when everyone has the opportunity and the support to realize their ambitions, and when we respect and protect our environment for future generations. I feel like you didn't need so many periods in that paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, to read. All right, yeah, so that, that's from his site, wapcanoe.ca. Um, yeah, so he's, in, he's a lead politician in Manitoba for the NDP. Um, looks like he's leader for his Air Fort Rouge, that area of the NDP, and uh, he's probably a good candidate for federal NDP in the province of Manitoba. Mm -hmm. But these anonymous emails, anonymous emails, um, were sent. Now, I'm a little bit worried about that. See, so I got this other article here. Um, this is uh, 
a former judge and a TRC chair. That's the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, his name is Senator Murray Sinclair. Now, Wab, this, the, the, this is from uh, CBC News. The headline says, Wab canoe allegations turning into witch hunt, Senator Murray Sinclair says. We can't conduct the trial in the public media over these allegations, says former judge, TRC chair. So, uh, yeah, check them out. This is what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that guy right there. So, Senator Murray Sinclair says, the controversy over accusations over domestic violence against a newly elected leader of the Manitoba NDP, Wab Canoe, is turning into a witch hunt. Um, he says, from the perspective of looking at this objectively, we can't conduct a trial in the public media over these allegations, Sinclair said on CBC's Information Radio on Thursday. Uh, he goes on to say, the concern I have is that this is beginning to look like a witch hunt. Canoe has been, de Canoe has been defending himself against the allegations since anonymous emails were sent to the media last month. Court records showing the rookie AMLA was charged with two counts of assaulting, blah, 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 blah. Uh, charge of state 2004. So, um, yeah. I guess people, when they're running for public office, they have to remember their past and maybe even... You know, it would have been better if well, we, if somebody didn't have to dig up this dirt and he just came forward and presented himself as maybe a, you know, a changed person or yeah. spoke to what occurred, but I don't, what, what's his excuse? Because all I'm really saying right now is um, a lot of men standing up for Wob. Yeah. yeah. Well, definitely. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what's his name? Um, Sinclair. I can tell you there, there probably won't be any new discoveries. I think he's answered all of the questions. Sinclair says, I think the reality is the more we talk about it, the more frustrated we're going to feel because we are not getting any new stuff and we are just rehashing old stuff. Now, this is where he talks about how this is going to discourage young people. Now, this caught me, right? Sinclair said he's concerned about the message that dredging up Canoe's history has sent to other people who have made mistakes in their past. He says, this is going to discourage young people who may have done something wrong in their past to come forward, even though they've changed. They've become stronger, they've become better, and they are ready to deal with their responsibilities, he says. Sinclair said he connected with Canoe because of his leadership skills and because at the end of the day, he will be an asset to the indigenous community as well as an asset to the Manitoba public and the Canadian public. When asked whether supporting Canoe could send a message about not believing women who come forward, Sinclair said, we just have to recognize that there are two different versions of the event out there. So he's the former judge, the chief commissioner of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. He's presided over many cases where there are two different, different versions of the same event. And he, the court doesn't always start from the premise, the complainant is always telling the truth. The witch hunt thing, though, that's a little odd. I mean, that's women who were persecuted for their beliefs. So the witch hunt thing, if he's a judge, I mean, that's sort that's of... That's what he's saying. Basically, by judging up these old things, what it's turning into a witch hunt. Um, I, I believe that, too, as well. What's going on? Yeah, well, I, I come, I'm on this Well, I guess I'm not... I don't, I don't support the fact that, you know, Wob did that in his past. Wob Canoe did that. Um, yeah, that may have happened in the past, but that was like 14 years ago as well. And I do believe that people can change uh, in their lifetime. Um, and people should not be punished for their mistakes years after they have happened. So that's just my personal belief. Uh, people can change. Like uh, we look at our own politicians out on the res. You know, our people have had a past. You know, our men and our women, they, they clean themselves up in years. And our people, as Nitsitipi, I believe we are a lot more forgiving than um, our non-native partners. And the slandering that's going on is probably not from his people. I doubt it. I mean, there are whispers at home on the res, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Bob did this, Bob did that. But nobody's going to send some anonymous emails. I don't think so either. Yeah. I think it was probably the other political parties or mm -hmm. somebody it sounds like a, like him. Sounds perhaps. like something very political. That's what I believe, yeah. Something political. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to play a couple of songs back when, from when Wob Canoe was a rapper. This first one is called uh, Last Word, Wob Canoe. 
featuring Tinsel Tori. So, y'all yeah, think about it. Enjoy yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you got those 40s on ice and those knives on. Check, check. Yo, Facebook Live. Hope you like that. Make sure you come out to Moses Lake tomorrow. We're having a big music festival, so check it out.